Hi, this is Cypher, and this is another video that's looking at my finicky layout project. Now, when you are laying your track, you are going to have fish plates, and very often you're going to need to cut the ties back, the sleepers, cut the ties back to expose enough room for the um, fish plate. Whether you're using these wires that are soldered on or just fish plates, the same applies. So then what you have to do is you've got to find a way of fixing your sleeper back in so that, oh, this is fiddly. So basically your sleeper will be in line rather than having a big horrible gap. Now on a lot of videos you see people just trimming off the top of the um, sleeper, if I can just get this into focus, roughly there, they'll come in with a knife, slice that end edge off, slice the bottom off, clean it up and then literally they offer it up and slide it underneath. Now that's fine in a lot of cases. Now there's two different types of track. Right, just zoomed in on the ends of these two um, lengths of track and you can see that the one on the right is set track and you can see that the rails are actually sitting on top of the sleeper so you can push the sleeper underneath after you've cut the ties off the top the one on the left is code 55 and that's the track that I'm using um, it sits quite a bit lower um, on the the board so it's supposed to be a little bit more realistic but you'll see that the metal rail is actually sitting down in the plastic so if you try and slide the sleeper underneath the track like you see in a lot of videos you're going to find it's not going to work because you don't have the clearance so um, that's the problem and I'll show you how I very quickly get around that problem so that I can put sleepers um, around fish plates and the like. Right, there's a number of ways of addressing this issue. Um, firstly, when you get your points, you'll find that attached to the point, and forgive me, I've actually taken my points out, um, but you'll see that there will be an additional sleeper in one end, and also two at the other end of the points. Now those are obviously designed for use with the points. If you've got a number of lengths of flex track like I've got then you might have additional droppers that you want to have and therefore you're not going to have all of these different sleepers. We'll just have a look at those first of all just for completeness if I just zoom in here. These are the two sleepers that come with the point. This one has got an even block either end and that can be just used to go in here would be ideal for dropping underneath the uh, fish plate here the other type has got a longer block on this end and a shorter block on the other end and that one is for use with your points where you've got the um, uh, basically the sleeper is going to be butting up against other sleepers and you haven't got the clearance so you put the thin end to a thin end and then you can obviously get two sleepers in the point but for the purpose of this video what we're going to do is pretend that we haven't got any spares of those but what we do have What we do have is a sleeper or a tie that we've cut off the end here. Now you can see immediately that we've got this edge. This edge is quite yucky. And if I can get this in focus, you will also see where the rail actually sits down. So we've got to get rid of all of this sort of area. So, tools that we need. Obviously, we need our piece of track that we're working with. We need one or more sleepers. I tend to use a pair of pliers 
and these are pliers that will sit flat on the desk if you've got a pair of pliers that have got like a raised grip here then this isn't quite going to work so well um, I'll show you how I use those in, in a moment and we're going to require a file now the file I've got here is just the right width to cover the track and the fish plate and of course we're going to need our trusted knife just for trimming off edges you could use sandpaper um, or a file if you want I tend to find knife easier all right this is going to get quite fiddly so I'm going to be moving things out of the way and zooming the camera in it's a lot easier if you're actually doing this with a camera um, so let's just zoom in on this okay that's about as close as I can get uh, with the camera so the first thing we need to do is with our knife we just need to trim off these edges A little bit fiddly doing this with the camera under your nose. Uh, certainly a lot easier when the camera's not in shot. Now although I've got a cutting board here, um, I'm doing this on paper so that you can see better on the camera. And uh, also it means I don't mess up my cutting board when I actually start filing this down. Okay, so that's just trimmed up. Next, we'll come in with our pliers. And what I tend to do is just open these up, slide the sleeper in as far as you need to go so that you can then get the serrated edge into where the rail was before. Like I said, it's quite difficult trying to do this around the camera, so forgive me for keep disappearing. Um, we then get the serrated edge of the file. And we come in and we just simply then file down the sleeper. Now it is important that you get the right size file. Okay. And then you can just have a look when this comes back into focus. You can then start to see how far down into the sleeper you're coming. And with a bit of practice you will get to know how far down it needs to be. So I need to go a little bit further. And I tend to find that using the um, pliers just to hold it makes life a lot easier. It also means that if you would bring your file up to the pliers then it, you can get a, uh, a better file through that's more upright rather than getting one that's bendy. Now again I'm doing this underneath the camera so this one isn't going to be perfect but you get the idea of how to do that. Now it looks pretty messy so that we would then do the other one and then simply when you've finished get your knife and then just simply clean up these little bits and pieces along the edge. Now I'm doing this off camera because I really don't want to slice my finger with a knife. Okay, and when you've finished, nice and easy job, doesn't take too long. 
you should end up ugh, lost it with a sleeper that looks something like that now my file is slightly curved if you've got more of a squared on you would get more of a squared on finish and I might just want to take that down just a little bit more tidy it up um, but I think you're starting to get the idea and then if I bring back the rail and we need to do this before we stick the rail down for obvious reasons Be a little bit fiddly. Just get me in the right place. Like I said a minute ago, I'm doing this under the camera, so it's, uh, it does add some complexity into the whole thing. But you'll see there that with the sleeper pushed down, so I'm pushing this one down into the paper, um, I can still move this sleeper around, which means that it's not actually ri raised the rail off the floor and then if I've got another one that's been pre-prepared we can just slide that one under get it lined up in position so probably just something like that uh, now I've got a fish plate in here so just need to move this around so we get that in the right place and I tend to get a, oh I can spend ages going backwards and forwards with these to get them exactly lined up I tend to get a bit uh, a bit silly with it but you get the idea so what do you do if you're using my glue method for fixing the track is to put your glue down and then put the rail down, lifting it, slide the sleeper under, drop the rail back down on it and this one because it's the other side of the solder is uh, that the solder parts you could just simply slide that straight in and then you've got a reasonably good sleeper right the way up to the end of the rail so that's how I do it. Right back downstairs on the layout and you can see here one set of sleepers that have been fitted and one set of sleepers that are yet to be fitted so this piece of track has not yet actually been stuck down and we'll be running a um, cutting these sleepers back and then running a small sleeper in here and uh, another one in here to fill the gap in the same way that I filled the gap here now you can see that this gap is slightly smaller than this one and this one is slightly larger than that one and that's mainly because of the um, the fish plates that are, are in there and, and where the, the soldering and stuff is so once we've actually got some ballast in there that won't show quite so badly now if I come over to this point here there we go then you can see here this particular sleeper section here and this one here have got the smaller cut off sections which were at the end of the each end of the point so you can see how they fit quite nicely together um, and that sort of makes that look a little bit better we're actually quite up close and personal so you can see that things aren't sort of quite aligned but when you're actually looking at the track and it's ballasted then that will be fine and if we come back down the end these are the two sleepers or four sleepers, two at each end these are the sleepers that we actually created yesterday in the video and you can see how they have now fitted underneath the fish plates and they sit in there quite nice so I'm going to have the station section here so this is going to be terminus um, and you can see that they they actually look reasonably good and then if we look at those from a distance
you really wouldn't know any any better they look absolutely fine so I keep saying that I'm not going to be doing any more videos um, that is going to be the case now because I've still got quite a bit of uh, track to lay I've got this bit to lay um, I've got this bit here which goes across into the uh, engine shed needs to be laid this point needs to be laid um, this piece of track over here needs to be finished off and then obviously I've got the point motors for this whole section here to um, wire up underneath um, I've covered all of that in earlier videos so I'm going to sign off now and over the next few days weeks whatever try and find some time to get that part of the layout finished and then we'll be getting into the bit that I like which is the scenery so thanks very much for your time today catch you again very soon bye bye mm -hmm.